Well, kia ora koutou, everybody. A very warm welcome to St. George's Online Church Community, where we're going to do something just a little bit different um, for certainly the first three weeks of January until we see what traffic light system we're at. So we're doing a series called Pandemic Epiphanies, and uh, we're going to interview uh, a few people from our own congregation to hear some of their great realizations in this whole pandemic journey. I think it's taken many of us to perhaps reflect a little more deeply on aspects of what's truly important in our lives and how our faith speaks into this. So I'm um, really pleased to say that with us today, we have Susan Parry. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for being brave enough to uh, step into this, <laughs> this new adventure for St. George's. So I guess, Susan, the first obvious thing would be, tell us, for those who don't know you, just a little bit about yourself. Well, probably, first and foremostly, I'm married to Brian, your vicar's warden. <laughs> That's and... a good man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, secondly, I am mother to two sons and a daughter. And thirdly, I'm a grandmother to four unique, amazing individuals. And... Um, Faith-wise, I actually started my faith journey in a village Anglican church in the Midlands in the United Kingdom, and I've continued it in Anglican, Presbyterian, Baptist churches in Dunedin, Auckland, and, um, and Singapore. Um, so... It's been a progressive faith journey and every stage the church has been vital uh, in, in meeting you, the changing questions that happen from childhood to teenagehood to uh, the challenges of life. And then lastly, what do I what do I what do I do? Well, in actual fact, I'm a medical specialist. I'm a gastroenterologist, which is basically a gut doctor, you know, and um, and for many years I was actually a consultant at Counties Manico. And that was just an enormous privilege. But in actual fact, now I'm a bowel cancer doctor and I'm actually the clinical lead for the national bowel screening um, program. And I have to take this opportunity to say, if you get that little test in the post, please do it because it could save your life. And the other thing I do is that I'm the lead for a national service that specializes in um, families who have familial bowel cancer. Mm. And tragically that often affects young people. And so I'm dealing with those families and providing um, really international level expertise to, the, to these families to make certain that they are reassured that just because we live in little remote New Zealand, they don't have access, you know, they don't have access to the highest level um, advice. So there's an international community that I belong to. So that's a little bit about me. Yeah, and I, I think it's worth um, giving that an extra plug, Susan. I, was, I said to Susan, I had a little smile when I received my letter through the post with the kit uh, <laughs> for the, the, bell, so the early early detection. And, and the reality of that has come home to me, of course, because many, many people in our community know that Andy Spear, who was for many years uh, our worship leader at St. George's and recently passed away at the age of 37 from bowel cancer. So these things are, you know, are very real uh, in our lives, really. The first question um, I, I wanted to ask was really about ourselves, you know, know thyself. Um, I, I would say that part of our faith, of course, as I've just said from Paul, is this, this wanting to know more deeply about ourselves, uh, a deeper wisdom. And we would say as Christians to be guided by the Holy Spirit in, in all of this. But um, top of your head, as you've journeyed, I would say it's almost been the last two years now, really, that we've journeyed this. I know that the first great lockdown came in March of 2020. So it's almost two years, really, that we've all been this, doing this nationally, individually and globally, of course. That's, I think that's what makes this so, 
so pertinent is that I can't think of anything in my lifetime where globally all the countries pretty much of the world have been on this same kind of slight, well, traumatic journey for many people. Um, and we've all as countries tried to come up with different ways, of course, of, 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 of finding the answers of how we negotiate the journey. So have you had any mini great deep realizations about you? What is it? What do you feel it may have revealed to you about yourself? The good, the bad and the ugly, you know? <laughs> OK, well, yeah, I'll leave, I'll leave the bad for last. Um, <laughs> but first and foremost, I think it's um, reminded me that I'm a social being. Mm. Um, we we got back home when um, at one point and my daughter, Sarah, said, oh, look at mum, you can tell she's an extrovert. So um, but I'm a social being. And as much as I love Brian and as much as I love being with him, I did, I just realize afresh that the value of face to face community. Mm-hmm. And that includes church. It includes my work colleagues. Um, and, and I suppose um, maybe I took it for granted, particularly this last lockdown of four months, just how important all those uh, interactions mm-hmm. are. So I realize I'm a social being. I realize that for me, friendship and fellowship with close family and friends and wider community is really important and they play a part in uh, in my life and I value them in a sense for keeping me sane and for keeping me on the right um, on the on the right track you know and being blunt with me you know um, you, your partner can be blunt to a certain extent but sometimes it's your friends and your family who can you know, if you like, cut and run, they can give it to you. So you know, I, re- I realise how much I value the, the different, that different perspective. So that's the, the first thing. I think um, the second thing was the importance of keeping a right perspective. You know, I suddenly thought about what it was like for the war as you said, this is the first time it's been a global um, in our lifetime. And it made me think about the war. It mm. made me think about other people where situations have been thrust on them and they've had to be separated. It's added a poignancy to the Afghanistan situation, to the refugees desperately trying sometimes leaving loved ones and so I think it has helped me yes it's bad yes it's been COVID bad yes we've been separated from loved ones but I've had to again if you like stop take a pause and get a perspective um, you know both globally and historically as to what other um, populations uh, have faced. Um, But at the same time, you know, as I was reunited with loved ones and it was so emotional, I thought of other people like yourself, Josh, who are actually still separated from loved ones. Mm -hmm. Some people who might never be reunited again, you know. um, And I thought of other people in lockdown who actually were doing it tough before lockdown, whether it was illness, whether they were grieving, um, whether they were living on their own, whether an elder person struggling. And so for me, I had to learn to breathe Mm. and take a perspective into every day um, when when I was struggling. Those are the good things. I can talk about the bad, but if you have any questions, you can. I'll talk well, yeah, about yeah, the bad in a second. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you're making me reflect. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I confess I've, I've mentioned it a couple of times. I have, I have found this particular time around, mm. um, and it's especially Christmas, obviously. I've been speaking to my family in the UK, and I've had a few emotional moments. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not even so much the fact that, well, I haven't now seen them or held them for, for over three years. 
it, I guess it's the worry of when will I, you know, when yeah. will they be able to come here? Especially this is normally when someone from the UK arrives for the, uh, oh, the, exactly. you know, the Kiwi summer, as it were. And, and we're really excited because we can show them the beauty of this country. Um, and when it's not happening, I can, I can feel the, the ache and the tug. Um, have, have you at any point, um, as you know, in our own conversations, I, 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 I it's particularly with the work that Kim does. Um, I'm, I'm oh, acutely yeah. conscious of mental health. Oh, Speaking to members exactly. of our congregation, I, I've, in different ways, but people's mental health has, has taken a hit, however you mm -hmm. want to see that, and manifested in different ways. If you're living alone, for instance, you know, I mean, that can produce a different dynamic. State of the world anxiety. I saw somebody put mm -hmm. on their Facebook thing, you know, woke up at three o'clock in the morning with state of the world anxiety. And I thought it was a great... Because some of us, you know, um, probably some of us tune in to social media around the world and get mm -hmm. and see things that are going on there. And all of that builds up to this sense of where are we headed with all this? How is this affecting us? Yeah. Are, we, are we changed? Um, will this be a long term change of our of our psyche? Um, have you personally um, had moments where you thought, yeah, I need to get the tools to equip me because I can sense here that my mental health yeah, is taking. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the things I had to do, Josh, was cut down social media. Hmm. I actually had to cut down sometimes from um, because I felt the burden. Hmm. I felt the burden. And one of the things, good or bad, about being a doctor or being a minister is that you can actually feel people's pain. You know what it's like because you've shared it and you've walked journeys. And so sometimes when I, you know, people casually talk about, you know, how many deaths, those are so many families and so many people. So... I sort of was feeling that collective angst, if you like. So I had to cut social media right down. You know, when I was reading, I had to cut it down at certain times to limit that into bite-sized pieces, not to shut it off, because I actually had family or friends who were living on their own, who were struggling, or I've got an elderly relative oh my goodness, sometimes it was so cruel what was going on in some of those, um, you know, uh, retirement facilities and the angst of that. Hmm. And, um, and so I was very aware of the vulnerability of people and the need for me to keep in touch with them and also them to keep in touch with me and to take steps to stop social media um, when, I was be when I was beginning to be overwhelmed and in actual fact, uh, you know, go outside um, and look up. And that's what I'll um, talk about in, uh, in a little bit. But talking about mental health, the bad you talked about. OK, well, the bad is you could only take so much Zoom. You know, there's, <laughs> Zoom, there's Zoom fatigue, there's visual fatigue. And so, you know, Brian and I started off doing the services together. And, you know, obviously I'm in a lot of Zoom meetings for the Ministry of Health. But, you know, sometimes I just had to do the service by myself. I just yeah. had to be by myself and do it. And only occasionally could I join the Zoom chat at the church. It was just beyond me. Yeah. And yeah. I just had to accept that I could not do it there was this welling up and but at the same time I realized how important it was for others but I had to give myself if you like permission to say actual fact for your mental health Susan it's okay not um not to go to, not to go to the zoom and the other bad thing is I would like to say that I drove deep into many spiritual books and texts and looked at the theological crises of the world and I have to say that I was only able to get into a couple which I will mention and I've discovered that you need to escape and sometimes you watch two episodes of a series rather than one only two so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
you know, well, may, maybe more. <laughs> and, you know, that my husband would leave me um, to continue this escapism. So, yes, I think you very have you have to do a lot of mental hygiene and, um, you know, to keep yourself well. And, you know, not everybody has people can be in different places. There have been times in my life when I just need other people mm. to help me. And I, you know, in, in lockdown, I was able, you know, with these various practices to manage, but I was always mindful of some of my friends and being in contact and checking up and doing phone calls. And I used to do it Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights were my phone checkup nights or not phone checkup for, for, for me as well. They were my engagement nights mm. with um, with other people and colleagues, um, if you like, to keep me um, safe. And but I was grateful that I had those people. Some people struggle to make phone calls. Some people struggle with friends. So, at the same time, I was grateful. I think you raise a very good point there, though, uh, Susan, because we can all make the mistake of thinking that the spiritual uh, exists only in a book. Um, with somebody but I mean we you know we know full well we we believe in the father son holy spirit the triune yeah. god and at the very core of that is relationship I mean it's yeah. it's the essence yeah. of the entire Absolutely. universe everything is relation yeah. everything is yeah. relation to, into everything so why would we why would we be surprised that to be around people um, for which we were created and then to go for walks in nature um, where and yeah. feel that connection with the gift that God created. This is all God given. It's not a separate thing. Um, and for me and Kim, a lifesaver, well, not lifesaver, you know, a mental health saver um, yeah. was to, to go for daily walks. We made it our discipline. Yeah. That we would go for a walk, either Mission Bay, you know, along there, St. Helier's, Predominantly Cornwall Park, and to walk among mm. the trees. I mean, yeah, I definitely, definitely have a sense of when I, when I'm walking by trees, that there is something being given to me that's life enhancing, life giving. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it's that interconnectedness. So I think we can all make the mistake. I mean, I I do read a lot of theological books. I know you do, Josh, and that's why I had to say it's a downside. You asked and me I, to show my negatives that I told you. But there's a time, there are times when I go, look, I don't need this anymore. I just want to go and take some deep breath, swim in the sea, read a novel, you know, just yeah. read a novel um, because you can sort of cram yourself with too many things and too many yeah. thoughts. So it's, 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 it's about balance and harmony. Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, it's interesting. You asked me, you know, to think about what were the realizations about faith. And you know what? I realized afresh there are absolutely no spiritual giants. Mm. There's no special people at all, you know. And I think the Christmas story reminds us of that. Yeah. You know, wasn't it wonderful? Jesus was born in a manger. Um, the shepherds were hearing first. Shepherds weren't necessarily highly regarded. You know, you've you brought that out in um, the sermon. We're all the same before God. And Brian is often quoting that salon evangelist, uh, Daniel Niles, saying, you know, really, we're all just one. Christianity is about one beggar telling another beggar where to get bread. And so in, in lockdown, there's nobody that is a spiritual giant. You know, we, we, we are all the same before God and struggling, if you like, to, um, to find a way. And when I talked about, um, you know, mental hygiene, all those things we invite the spirit of God into. Mm. Those that's the privilege of being a Christian is that as you pray, we have those insights to help us order our thoughts, to help us, if you like, to be to illuminate practices in our lives that that aren't necessarily being constructive. And I found that um I found that a very important um, thing to be reminded of. Yeah. So I, 
I mean, feel free to, to bring anything else. I was yeah. just thinking in terms of one of the questions we definitely want to say is that there's no guarantee, of course. In fact, it's more than likely that 2022 will be um, as equally uncertain. You know, we have Omicron coming now, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So given all that you've learned about yourself, how your faith has you know, spoken into that journey, mm-hmm. how do you see all of that um, equipping you, helping you, preparing you for the journey into 2022? Yeah, well, I think um, probably i will just finish my faith, things I've learned faith-wise. Um, really, because that's what's equipped me, is going to um, equip me, hopefully, who knows, um, for 2022. I think I've learned the importance of just trusting and being grateful. And as you talked about, Josh, letting nature reminders of God's um, of, of God's omnipotence you know so when you're feeling overwhelmed just to go outside and look up just take a breath look up as you say plunge into the sea but the other thing I've learned is it doesn't matter how you're feeling and a lot of the days they were blood you know you sort of you know to start off with it was it was nice and then but then you realize that it's more of the same for four months and it's the importance of the resources i've appreciated the electronic resources actually i've resisted them i like my paper copies i like things but you know what they are handy and if you're feeling a bit low they're quicker to get to so i've appreciated the um daily lectio I've appreciated the beautiful, beautiful prayers. And I was going to try and share one of those. And of course, my phone chooses that particular moment to lock. But this is an example of, of a prayer for a prayer for today. From our mother's womb, you have known us, O oh God. You call us to follow you through all our days and seek us even when we wander. As we advance in years, close us with your love that we may grow in grace and find favor in your sight through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I have found starting the day with these prayers from the Daily Lectio app, it's a new discovery for me in lockdown that it's important. And then moving straight on to, you know, encounter with God, the the Bible reading I do, whether I feel like it or not, and even if it's only taking me 30 seconds because I can't face it, you know. But then the other thing was I made myself take three words into the day, Mm. three lessons, you know, three things, Be, be light, be salt or what various things like that, I would make myself think of three words that I needed to take in the day. Yeah. And then, of course, the other things that you have, you know, our home group, just, just doing that um, every three, listening to church. And then, you know, the, the odd good book is helpful. And this one is, lit- I don't know if you can see it, probably not in focus blurring slightly yeah 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 but anyway lit- litany of the ordinary by tish harrison warren and she talks about sacred practices in everyday life making the bed brushing the teeth fighting with your husband sitting in traffic and so i think it is um and then consistently thinking of others and praying for them so I've found those routine practices even if I don't feel like it even if I'm feeling flat even if I'm doubting it's the importance of just doing it um and then to go on to enter your question Josh um given that 2022 is likely to be a journey of uncertainty what have I learned? Um, actually, nothing in life is certain, Josh. Mm. Even before COVID, 
I think we get lulled into a false sense of security. And in actual fact, life can change in an instant. And there'll be people listening who've had a new diagnosis of cancer that they didn't expect. Somebody who's lost a loved one in a traffic accident or in something. Life can change so quickly. We don't actually need COVID mm. to change our lives. And I think it's that which forces our dependence and um, trust in God. And I think COVID's just been a great reminder that we're not in control. Yeah, It's a great reminder that we need to trust in the um, omnipotence of God. And I think the importance of, a, of what I've written down here is... Um, you know, lifting our eyes to keep a right perspective, remembering the hope of Christ in Christmas, being grateful for what we do have, and remembering those who are struggling. And it'll be us one day, and it'll be others. And um, they're suffering through no fault of their own. Mm. So, you know, and with that, there needs to be needs to be prayer. And so I think for 2022, my prayer is that I'll be able to carry and demonstrate the hope, the excitement, and the light of Christmas into 2022, whatever happens and whatever I'm feeling. Um, you know, so those are some of the things. Well, that, that, that sounds like that sounds like a, a natural way to end and a good way to end. For the, that's the prayer, I think, for all of us as we move into 2022. And as you know, I'm going to put a little question or reflection verse of scripture with this uh, and a piece of music so people can, you know, just think about their own epiphanies, realizations. How is your journey? Things that you've said, how does that speak into uh, other people's journeys. Um, you've touched on a lot of a lot of a lot of good and deep stuff. So thank you very much, Susan. And uh, and I really appreciate you giving up your time for another Zoom meeting <laughs> so soon after Christmas. Um, and yeah, I'm really grateful for it. So thank you very much. And it's been great to see you. And give my love to Brian. And uh, yeah. yeah, and and thanks for the opportunity, the Josh. Actually, it was a good uh, time to reflect and to consolidate in preparation for the new year yeah. what 2021 has taught us yeah well thank you susan i mean i know how busy you are truly and and, and, the, and the pressure you've had no different year, than you josh the very various uh, adventures <laughs> but no thank you and uh god bless you take care uh, and lots of love to all the whanau okay thanks josh god bless bye bye susan